Hi there, and um, welcome back. As always, thank you for checking in and just doing your best to be engaged. Last week, we started talking about the unit circle, which again is a, a tool to help us um, understand the relationship between those trigonometric ratios. And we're gonna continue with the unit circle this week, but before we do that, I wanna introduce something called a radian. Um, and so this is this will be a brand new topic for you, and it, it's going to be a little bit confusing at first. But again, I, I encourage you to do your best, give it some thought, and as always, reach out if you have questions. So a radian. What is a radian? A radian is a unit of measure of an angle. So it's just it's it's like a degree, right? It's a measure of an angle. Um, and what it's equal to is it's equal to the angle at the center of a circle whose arc is equal in length to the radius. So a radian is a unit of measure of an angle that is equal to the angle at the center of a circle whose arc is equal in length to the radius. So, um, that's there's a whole lot of terminology there that we we should review. So first of all, um, remember an arc is uh, a a section of the circumference, and again the circumference of a circle is the uh, distance along the outside of the circle. Um, and so that that section of the circumference is going to be equal to the length of the radius. So we just take a look at this picture over here. If I have a radius r right and of course that means this is r as well if if i were a little ant and i were walking along the length of the radius right your pattern walk along the length of the radius um and i walked along the outside of the circle along this arc right that's formed by this angle theta then the distance that I walk along the outside would be exactly the same as the distance I walk along the radius. So which means that this angle theta is equal to one radian. So it again, it's it's a type of angle. Basically, it's it's a section of a circle um, that's formed when the outside of the circle of that section, the arc is the same distance um, or length as the radius. Now, um, I, I, again, I, I, I'm sure that's not quite enough. Uh, so let's let's look at a little bit more of a, um, a an animation here to help us better understand. So yes, you're watching a YouTube video and a YouTube video, but I think it's a good example here. Um, so as we watch this together, so we consider a circle, right? Um, and that circle has a radius of r. So if I take that length and I put it along the outside of the circle, right, that's going to be the same distance, then that angle that's formed is one radian. Okay. So we have our, our one single radian there because that arc is the same length as the radius. Now, you know that there are 360 degrees in a circle, right? A full circle is 360 degrees. Um, radians uh, can also form a full circle, but it's a little bit it's a little bit trickier. So to, what's going to happen here is we're going to just kind of trace out a path, two radians, and then notice that three radians gets us almost there, just a little bit more. High radians gets us to half of the circle. Now, if we think about the value of pi, pi is just over 3, right? 3.14 approximately. Um, so it takes pi radians to go halfway around the circle. Now, if it takes pi radians to go halfway around the circle, how many radians does it take to go the whole way? Two pi radians. Now, how this relates to what we already know is we know that the circumference of a, of a circle right, the circumference of a circle is two pi r, or two pi times the radius. Now, if I have a unit circle, that means that my radius is one. So my circumference would be two pi times one, or simply two pi. 
So again, if we're thinking about the fact that a radian is where the arc is the same as the radius, um, if our radius is one, then two pi arcs or two pi um, uh, sections that are one unit in length will get us all the way around the circle. So I encourage you to, to check out this animation again on your own um, to really um, let it sit. If you guys are hearing some funny noises in the background, that's because my cats have been sleeping all day long and they have decided just now to get a little bit wild. So if you hear some horrifying noises, I am also horrified. It's just the cats. So how does this relate to our unit circle and our degrees? So let's take a look at a circle. Um, and we know that from the unit circle, we're going to measure it um, from the, the kind of the positive x direction. So it starts at zero degrees. And if we go all the way around, right, this zero degrees is also 360 degrees. So we can think of the same way as radians. So if we start there, we have zero radians, right? Um, we haven't gone anywhere. If we go all the way around the circle, that's two pi radians. Now, if it's two pi radians all the way around the circle, um, we can also break that circle up. We saw in the animation that halfway around the circle was pi radians, which means that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Now we can break that up even further, right? Um, we know that halfway between 0 degrees and 180 degrees is 90 degrees. So what's halfway between 0 radians and pi radians? Well, it's 1 half pi, or pi over 2. Oops, I should call that a radian. So pi halves radians is equal to 90 degrees. And then again, we can keep going. We know that um, down here we have 270 degrees. So what would the equivalent radian be? Well, if we're going by pi halves every quarter, another pi halves plus pi would be three pi halves radians. So we're, we're thinking of a, a, a radian as kind of a more, a, 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 a different standardized version of, of measuring the angle of a circle. Um, or in this case, kind of measuring the segments of a circle. So the long story short here is that we, we started with zero slash two pi radians, because that's all the way around. And then we kind of broke it up using our, our, our number sense here. Half of two pi halfway around is pi radians. Um, halfway to pi radians is pi halves. So we're going to continue to, to look at the other sections of the unit circle that we would have seen, um, and, and we're going to continue to connect this to the degrees that we already know. So I'm just going to add a couple things that we, we already know here. So 0 degrees or 360 degrees is equal to 0 radians and 2 pi radians. Oops, radians. Um, pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Pi halves radians is equal to 90 degrees. And three pi radians, whoops, ooh, three pi halves radians, goodness gracious, three pi halves radians is equal to 270 degrees. Okay, so those are the, the pieces that we just discovered on the last section. Now we're gonna break it up further. So we go back to this first quadrant here, um, and halfway between zero degrees and 90 degrees is 45 degrees, right? 45 degrees. So we're thinking, well, what is halfway between um, zero radians and pi halves radians? What's, zero, what's halfway between zero and a half? A fourth, right? Pi fourths radians. So um, those 45 degree increments, right? 0, 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 
270 and then 315 degrees, um, each one of those 45 degree segments uh, is equivalent to one fourth pi radians or pi fourths radians. So again, using our, our number sense and I guess our, our fraction skills, we keep adding pi fourths. So what's pi fourths plus pi halves? Well, that's three pi fourths, right? Three fourths of pi. And then another quarter, we get pi. Another quarter after pi, we get five fourths pi or five pi fourths. And so we, we kind of keep going there. Um, and finally we get, what is a seven pi fourths radians. So the, the, the breakdown between the radians and the degrees really, really comes down to fractions, right? If we consider that the whole circle is two pi radians, how do we break up two pi radians into those appropriate fractions? So we've dealt with our kind of 90 degree reference angles, our 45 degree reference angles. And then the last bit that we should consider would be those, um, those 30 and 60 degree angles. So uh, let me just, we've got zero radians. You're gonna be tired of seeing this, but maybe, maybe it'll help you remember. Um, pi halves radians, pi radians, and three pi radians, right? Um, whoops, three pi halves, I keep doing that. Okay, so we've got, again, our starting with our zero degrees and our 360 degrees. And so now we're thinking about those little 30 degree increments, again, going counterclockwise. So if this is 30 degrees and then 60 degrees, right, to get to that 90 degree, um, then we're thinking of, well, in from that, that quarter of the circle, it goes from zero to pi halves. And we're breaking that up into thirds. So what is a third of pi halves? Well, a third of pi halves is pi six radians. And um, we can think about we, we keep adding that. Another visual is to think about um, how is it broken up? If we've got one pi is halfway across, um, then that 30 degree breaks up into one, two, three, four, five, six sections, right? Um, so that's where we get the pi six. The 60 degrees breaks it up into three sections. So we call that pi thirds radians. So really, we're getting a lot of great practice with our um, fractions here as well. Um, so uh, you might pause here and see if you can fill out the rest of the radians based on um, based on the uh, degree section and kind of that first quadrant, or you can simply uh, keep going and watch here. Oops, that's 300 degrees. Um, so our 120 degree is like uh, pi thirds plus another pi thirds um, or two pi thirds. And then our 150 degree, remember we kind of relate that to our um, 30 degree or we can think of it as two pi thirds plus another pi six really there's a lot of different ways that you can think about this um but we get five pi six um another way to think about that is that it's one sixth away from pi our 210 is one sixth further than pi so that's seven pi six um and then uh we could call this eight pi six or we should reduce it to four uh, thirds pi or four pi over three. Um, we're going to try to use these fractions in their simplest form. That 300 degree would be um, five pi thirds radians. And then that 330 degree would be 11 pi over six radians.
so it, this probably isn't you know 100 intuitive right now um, but i encourage you to you know think about the circle and think about the the fractions that we've broken it up into and how that might relate to two pi so uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, you know, besides the visualization here, um, because we can use fractions, we can break it down into um, proportion or portions of a circle here, excuse me. We can also convert from degrees and radians and back and forth algebraically. So the convert from degrees to radians tells us that x degrees, whatever that number of degrees is, is equal to x times pi radians over 180 degrees. Um, and this pi radians over 180 degrees is, is a fancy one um, because pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So let's do an example here. We'll call this example one. Um, I wanna convert 90 degrees, right? Um, so we saw based on our, our breakdown earlier what 90 degrees is equal to, but I, I want to reiterate that. So I take my 90 degrees and I multiply it by, oops, not equal to, haha, multiply it by pi radians over 180 degrees. Okay, well, 90 degrees and 180 degrees reduce to 1 over 2. So um, we get 1 pi divided by 2 or 1 pi radians divided by 2 or pi halves radians which is exactly how it broke down with our fractions up above uh, let's do another example uh, let's let's practice converting 60 degrees and just see how that works so 60 degrees would be 60 degrees times pi radians over 180 degrees um, 60 um, over 180 reduces to 1 over 3. So we get 1 pi radian over 3, which is pi thirds radian. So again, you can see how that, that those fractions from the visuals um, match kind of the algebraic work here. We can also go from radians to degrees if we needed to. And so the long story short here is that theta radians, however many radians that is, is equal to our theta, our number of radians, times 180 degrees divided by pi radians. And you might say, well, wait a second, that's the same as the last one, just upside down. Yes, right? Because we're working in reverse. Um, so let's just do a couple of examples there. So example one, let's convert pi fourths radians into degrees and just verify you know what we already know so that would be pi fourths times 180 degrees over pi um, so we get those pi's to reduce to one uh, and so then those ones the one time 180 and the four times one we get 180 degrees divided by four and 180 degrees divided by four is 45 degrees which matches what we made with our visual earlier. Just one more example here. Uh, let's look at 5 pi 6. Let's make this a little bit exciting. So 5 pi 6 radians. We take 5 pi 6. We multiply it by 180 degrees over pi. So again, those pi's reduce. Um, and let's see, we get 5 times 180 degrees divided by 6. 180 divided by 6 reduces um, to what? To do, do. Why am I having a hard time thinking of this? 30? <laughs> 30 over 1. And so 5 times 30 divided by 1 gives us 150 degrees, which if we look back at our picture, um, 150 degrees is in fact 5 pi 6 radians. So um, just a little bit of practice here converting back and forth. Um, I will tell you this is probably not the most important topic right now, but I do think it's a little bit interesting just to see how we can um, convert back and forth. 
Uh, so um, let's go for, uh, from degrees to radians. So again, from degrees to radians, right? We, we take our X, our degrees, and we multiply it by um, pi radians over 180 degrees. So 62 degrees. We do 62 times pi and divided by 180. Um, now, this I think we, we could use our calculator here and just um, go ahead with that. And so we would get 1.082 radians. Okay. Um, let's see. Example two, 100 degrees would be um, 100 times pi over 180, right? Those degrees are the units that cancel out. Now we could simplify this as a, as a ratio. We would get five pi ninth radians. Or if you plug that into your calculator, um, you would get an approximate um, value of 1.745 radians. So I am gonna have you try um, three and four. Okay, so we can convert from degrees to radians. Um, let's also just do one more, a little bit of practice here, converting from radians to degrees. So uh, again, we take whatever that theta is, that, that radian value, and we multiply it by one, oops, 180 degrees divided by pi radians. So um, pi fifths radians, we take uh, pi fifths, whoopsies, just want to change my color there. Pi fifths, we multiply it by 180 degrees over pi radians. And so again, those pi's reduce. And we get uh, 180 degrees divided by five, which is 36 degrees. Seven pi six, um, whoopsies, sorry. We do seven pi six times 180 degrees divided by pi radians, right? These are all in radians here. So once again, those pi's reduce. Um, and I'm also gonna reduce that 80 and that uh, six to 30 over one. So I've got all these ones all over the place. Um, so really what this is, is seven times 30 degrees, which is 210 degrees. So um, again, this this is not a, a perfect explanation. Um, the, the conversion here is more of a point of interest. I would rather you focus on, um, you know, how do the radians relate to that unit circle? So as always, just do your best. Whatever that is, whatever that looks like, that's awesome. Um, and of course, feel free to reach out and ask any questions. Um, hang in there. You are doing a great job and um, be proud of what you're doing.